This is Evenes Air Station, located in the county of Norland, northern Norway. Beyond it is the remote white wilderness of the Finnmark region, the furthest northern lands of Norway. Today, US Marine Corps F-35B Lightning II Joint Strike Fighters assigned to Marine Fighter Attack Squadron VMFA-542 are beginning to land. Deployed from their home base at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, North Carolina, they have made the long flight with support from aerial refueling tankers and a stop in Iceland. Awaiting them on the ground are US Marine aircraft maintainers who arrived by transport aircraft a few days earlier. The US Marine Corps have actually deployed three flying squadrons with the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing, 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force, FA-18 Hornets and additional air refueling tankers are on their way. These aircraft are some of the first to join their NATO Nordic allies as part of an exercise which concentrated forces across Finland, Norway and Sweden. It is called Nordic Response 24, part of NATO's biggest exercise in decades, called Steadfast Defender 2024. Now arriving at Andoya Air Station, Andoy Municipality are US Marine Corps FA-18 Hornet Aircraft, Marine Fighter Attack Squadron, VMFA-312. This exercise's primary goal is to prove NATO's capability to deploy forces to defend a NATO country under attack in a location that presents the most extreme and challenging environments, in this case, the Finnmark region of Norway. It just so happens a significant part of this region borders with Russia. However, the force threatening to invade is interestingly called Ocasus. In Latin, it means setting sun also mean downfall, ruin, death. Exercise Nordic Response 24 shown here is VMFA 542's first overseas exercise as an F-35B Lightning II jet squadron and first exercise since achieving initial operational capability on February the 5th 2024. The squadron retired its AV-8B Harriers on 1st December 2022. Initial operational capability means that VMFA-542 has enough operational F-35B Lightning II aircraft, trained pilots, maintainers and support equipment to self-sustain its mission essential tasks. This brings us to the French Navy Rafale M fighter jet. It's actually fully compatible with US Navy aircraft carriers and some French Navy pilots have qualified to fly the aircraft from US Navy flight decks. In theory, F-35B FA-18 Hornet remaining AV-8B Harriers and French Navy Rafale could operate together from the same American carrier. This jet though is heading to Norway. It's been less than 48 hours since US Marine pilots landed in the freezing Arctic environment at Andoya Air Station. Temperatures today are zero. When the pilots left their home base of Marine Corps Air Station Beaufort, South Carolina, the temperature was a respectable 13 degrees Celsius. This is of course one of the main exercise goals. Marines and allies are expected to fight the most challenging of environments. Lessons learned in this exercise will further strengthen the close partnership with NATO forces. Hopefully the Marines will have some time to admire the stunning backdrop of Norway's high north. In the meantime, US Marines with VMFA-312 are performing standard pre-flight procedures on FA-18D Hornet. This is HMS Prince of Wales, R09, one of the most powerful surface warships ever constructed in the UK. HMS Prince of Wales forms part of the Royal Navy's two strong fleet of Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. The UK carrier strike group escort of six ships were assembled for the start of Exercise Joint Warrior, a UK led exercise forming part of NATO Exercise Steadfast Defender. 
The Kara Group is sailing in the Norwegian Sea and will provide additional air support off the coast of Norway. The task group is led by the UK Carrier Strike Group embarked on the carrier which are operating F-35B jets alongside Merlin and Wildcat helicopters. US Marine Corps KC-130J Super Hercules aircraft assigned to Marine Aerial Refueler Transport Squadron VMGR-252 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing arrive at Andoya Air Station on board of additional deployed Air Ground Task Force Marines with 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing. For route the deployment, the MGR-252 will employ its KC-130J Super Hercules aircraft to support Marine Air Ground Task Force objectives such as providing transportation of cargo, combat air assault transport, aerial refuelling and aviation delivered ground refuelling. Without these often unsung logistic and transport heroes, the Marine Corps' slightly more glamorous attack aircraft would not be able to sustain operations. Here, RAF 617 Squadron personnel are working together with HMS Prince of Wales' aircraft handlers to launch three F-35B Lightning II jets flown in from RAF Marnham. The aircraft, capable of fulfilling air-to-air -air and air-to-ground roles as well as intelligence gathering and electronic warfare, are now under the command of the UK Carrier Strike Group, who are also afloat on HMS Prince of Wales. US Marines airmen are prepared for potential contact with enemy forces. Orcasis troops and equipment have reportedly gathered on the border area with Finnmark. The MFA 312 Squadron are employing its FA 18C and FA 18D Hornets to conduct combat air patrols, with the real possibility of supporting combined military air operations. Exercise Nordic Response 24 Air Operation Exercises have brought together more than 100 fighter jets, transport aircraft, maritime surveillance aircraft, as well as Allied CH-43 Super Stallion, Merlin and Cobra helicopters. Off Norway's coast there are 50 submarines, frigates, corvettes, aircraft carriers and various amphibious vessels. On the ground are thousands of soldiers trained on defending and protecting Nordic territory with various artillery systems, tanks, track vehicles and other land vehicles. As tensions continue to rise around the Finnmark border region and air patrols increase, a Royal Air Force Voyager tanker has been deployed. The tanker was operating from RAF Lossiemouth in northern Scotland when it rendezvoused with United States Marine Corps F 35Bs from VMFA 542 Squadron, completing a refueling operation. The A330 Voyager, normally based at RAF Prize Norton, then flew further sorties from Lossiemouth on the same day, successfully refuelling Swedish Air Force Jazz 39C Gripen, assigned to the Swedish Nor Bottom Wing F21.
at Royal Air Force Milden Hall, UK. United States Air Force 100th Air Refueling Wing are preparing to fly a KC-135R BN Stratotanker refueling sortie to support Finnish Air Force FA-18C Hornets operating air patrols over Sweden. In total, the Finnish Air Force have deployed 12 FA-18 Hornet fighters to prepare for the possibility to conduct combat operations. Eight of the aircraft will operate from Andoya Air Base in Norway. The Finnish Karelia Air Wing have deployed the fighters to Norway to practice operating from an Allied air base and will receive host nation support from the Royal Norwegian Air Force. The Finnmark district is now on high alert to the potential of an imminent invasion from Acacia's forces. News comes through. The northern region of the Alliance is attacked, activating Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty that commits the Allies to defend the area under attack. NATO air assets are scrambled to provide air cover for Allied forces. Norwegian airfields initially deploy air assets away from the facilities that could be attacked. As the situation becomes clearer, some airfields receive back scrambled aircraft and the airfield status resumes as operational. Allied countries have deployed ground forces to the Finnmark region, triggering intense battles on Thursday, March 7th, 2024. During this complex scenario, troops from the Finnish army will fight in a division consisting of Finnish, Swedish and British soldiers and Finnish, Swedish and Norwegian troops led by a Norwegian battalion will fight on the opposing side, named as Orcasus. The UK carrier strike group, now on a war footing, has received additional escort protection and is joined by USS Paul Ignatius DDG-117, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer. Military action is ongoing against invading Ocasus forces in the far north of Norway and the upper region of Finnmark. In a highly unusual move, NATO commanders have allowed the UK carrier strike group's unseen silent protector, submerged in the depths of the Norwegian Sea, to surface. It is the French nuclear attack submarine Amatist S. 605. She sends a very clear and deadly visual warning to Acacia's naval forces. A Norwegian Air Force F-35 Lightning II conducting combat patrols receives fuel from United States Air Force 914th Air Refueling Wing KC-135 shuttle tanker over a safe zone above Sweden. It's now three days since Ocasio's forces invaded the Finnmark region. Finnish and United States Air Force FA-18 Hornets based at Oulu Airfield, Finland have instigated a developing offensive attack concept called Distributed Aviation Operations. The key to the concept is to disperse squadron of fighter aircraft forward towards the conflict area, moving Hornet aircraft very rapidly throughout the area of operation. The aircraft will land and take off using multiple locations, including other Nordic countries. On landing, the aircraft will refuel and be rearmed by mobile refueling vehicles and KC-130J Super Hercules, which can refuel in the air or on the ground, as well as receiving fuel from a fleet of air refueling tankers from the UK, NATO and the United States. This will enable NATO Allied pilots to extend offensive operations against Ocasio's forces. The concept is to complicate the enemy's ability to track the rapidly moving aircraft and be able to employ firepower and mass it in the right time and place.
As the Hornets from Finland and the United States begin a long day of distributed aviation operations, the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that some US Marine Corps Hornets have different squadron numbers written on the fuselage. These are actually aircraft that were recently lost their squadrons due to the core slowly moving away from the older F-A-18 Hornets in favour of the higher tech F-35 Lightning II aircraft. Hornets from Marine Fighter Attack Squadron VMFA-115 and VMFA-533 became homeless in 2023 as the squadron transitioned to F-35 aircraft. Some aircraft were put in storage or earmarked to be broken down for spurs and parts and the rest reassigned to remaining Hornet squadrons. In this case, some are now flying here with VMFA-312 squadron. Marines for now will continue to fly the Hornet, one of the most robust carrier launched aircraft ever. The Marine Corps is likely to replace all Hornets by 2030.
Sure, Major Matthew Andrews, uh, Executive Officer of Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 312. Yeah, DAO is a, is a great concept that Second Maw is uh, pushing forward where we uh, can put our aircraft and squadrons with real firepower forward into multiple locations, making targeting really complicated for the enemy, uh, enabling us to fly from multiple bases, uh, mission plan from there, load ordnance from there, uh, and do everything that we need to do to support uh, the ground combat element in uh, regular and routine operations. DAO is an important concept because uh, it really complicates the enemy's ability to track our aircraft. We can move aircraft around an AO, uh, especially in the future with F-35, but now doing it with Hornets, moving aircraft very rapidly throughout an AO, relying on host nation support, equipment, facilities much like this one that are uh, located all throughout uh, another country to put our aircraft there, complicate their targeting in these hardened structures, move rapidly, uh, and uh, employ firepower and mass it in the right time and place. So our DAO operation in Olu, Finland was, uh, was actually really exciting. So we established very quickly a mission planning cell there uh, with full uh, secure VTC capability where we could talk and mission plan with people from all over the Nordics, uh, get all the information that we needed, launch the aircraft from there, uh, and we supported uh, maritime strikes as well as defensive counter-air and offensive counter-air operations uh, from this environment simultaneously uh, with operations from Endoya, Norway. The biggest challenge that the squadron has in Oulu is positioning the maintenance footprint there properly. Now, the whole reason that we do DAO and the reason why Finland is great is because they already have Hornets and eventually they'll have F-35s where now we can fall in on their infrastructure, on their equipment, on their people even, and have them help us do maintenance on the jets, use some of their parts uh, and things like that. We can fall in on a lot of the infrastructure that already uh, exists there. Yeah, so the coordination with the uh, Finnish Air Force was actually really seamless, uh, leveraging experience as a, as a Finnish exchange pilot for three years, knowing the people that I know there and the environment that we operate in there, it was really easy uh, for us to move locations rather quickly within uh, a couple of days notice and put our jets there, uh, coordinate all the uh, billeting, food, uh, everything that we needed as well as maintenance uh, parts, fuel, airspace and everything uh, pretty much just fell in on and we were ready to go as soon as we landed. 312 did an extraordinary job. The maintainers, the people, uh, the support staff and headquarters uh, did an extraordinary job uh, moving these aircraft. Typically when we move things around, it's these huge movements with big airplanes and uh, it takes a lot of time to get set up. Uh, and we did a really good job of, of moving in, packing light, moving quickly, moving to this new location, immediately being ready for operations and then starting uh, and flying in major large force exercises the next day, which is a pretty extraordinary feat and not something that we do very often in the Marine Corps, but something that will be uh, pretty standard in the future. Yeah, I think uh, the pilots are going to benefit a lot because Finland does DAO very, very well. They've been doing it for years. They have road bases all over the country. Uh, and that's a, a big part of their wartime strategy is to disperse their airplanes and put them all over uh, the country flying from multiple locations. And they do that really very well. And so it's a great opportunity. And we spend a lot of time in Finland learning from them uh, on how to do that and how we can rapidly uh, move these aircraft around. Yeah, actually this has been a pretty awesome detachment, man. Like getting to work with Sweden and Norway, Finland, uh, all these different countries at the same time. You hear French controllers and Italian controllers and British controllers, and we have jets from all over the place meeting in one place uh, to really put a lot of firepower down range. And to see that now with all the assets put together, having the battalions on the ground and the ships in the sea and everything was, was really, really impressive. Uh, and a good uh, a good example of our warfighting capability.